All right, somebody wanted to know um, what kind of hero skills I gave my character. Uh, so that's kind of fun. Uh, I've actually got Plague Burst, Heal, and Force of Corruption going on here. So that's kind of cool. Um, I actually never tested them. They're pretty much just standard skills that you would make. I want to say like Plague Burst is probably like a, you know, like some kind of energy burst. Yeah. Probably does some good damage. There you go. We could go try it on some enemies. Uh, let's see. Gotta get these moon walls activated so we can't get killed. That seems pretty important. Uh, an interesting factoid is that these moon wells aren't built by this wisp. Just kind of like a design oversight. All of our time budget on that wisp was spent making it shine a little bit differently than normal. A little bit more custom. Kind of fun like that. So that's all we got. Anyway, um, here's my team here. Let's see if we can get anywhere with Plague Burst. Uh, let's, maybe I'll open with a Plague Burst so you can see how much it damages for. Yeah, see, there you go. It's got them. Although I guess it kind of is less effective once they get outside of its range. Oh, these guys need to all uh, they need to stop standing still. There we go. Can that hurt my own guys? Hopefully not, but I think it did. Well, I'll take that Tome of Intelligence. That sounds good. Potion of Mana. That sounds good, too. All right. I got the Bird Demon. You can't beat me. Yeah, we got him. All right, the bird demon is a custom character. It was just made for this mission on War Smash. That's the only place that their art was made for and from. So nobody else has the bird demon right now. Only my, uh, only my little mini purple tree people right now have the bird demon. There you go. But uh, yeah, earlier I was playing this map and I got wrecked in a YouTube video. I'm totally blaming the fact that I did not have a mouse and keyboard at the time. I was on a laptop. Now now I do have a mouse and keyboard, so I don't think I should get wrecked. That's my opinion. Does this guy get hit by this? Oh, he totally does. It's killing him. Okay. So it probably killed my own guy, but I think it dealt damage to the enemies. Hopefully good damage. All right. Uh, well, hey, I got this crown of kings. That's got to be worth something. Well, let's get back to the base. We're getting beat up. I don't even know if I can get any more of those things. Probably not. It's, uh, this little custom civilization here doesn't have an altar, so I can't really bring back my... Uh, bird lady the way you're supposed to be able to also I really need to get some kind of anti-air uh, I guess that's what the turrets are for they have a minimum range that's stupid All right, we got her. There we go. Let's see if we can, like, aggro these guys back to my base. I think that sounds smart. Yeah. This is where maybe do I want to learn heal so I can keep my guys alive better. Maybe that's smart. Let's 
have her not go first so she can cast heal on stuff. It seems pretty good. So as you can see, we should probably upgrade the War Smash engine so that units that are outside of the sight range are not visible. Which would be a nice, a nice feature addition. Uh, are we losing? We're not allowed to lose. Hold on. I need to be able to hit that hotkey and see everybody's health bar. Can't get this item from under my guy. So in summary, I should definitely not have them attack the bird demoness because she doesn't have a heal. I don't think her heal can target herself. I think this is a not self heal. Yeah. And it's not nighttime, so none of my wells have any water. All right, let's go to this one. So somebody told me that War Smash videos are really, really boring. He was on the internet, he was like, they're boring, they're just playing Warcraft Melee. Does anybody else appreciate how comical of a complaint that is? That is an awesome, if that's the complaint that I'm getting, I win. That's all I'm saying, okay? If that's the complaint I'm getting, I win. All right, see like these guys, they should totally be invisible until I get close to them. It's kind of silly. I let her get in the in the center of things again. Well, let me summon some force of corruption over here. Get some more trance in on them. That'll get them. So this thing does kind of do area damage, and it would be nice if it did better than it's currently doing. But uh. Oh wait, it can't get me when I do that? Oh, that's overpowered. Well then I'm just gonna keep doing that. Oh, it can get me. Well, okay. Then I guess it doesn't work. Oh, that one's gonna die because I wasn't there to heal it. So I need to get better at the camera controls, I guess. Something like that. We got them anyway. Oh, I should have drank a mana potion to save that guy. All right. Huh. Well. Let's go, uh, let's go get some more guys. Oh, I don't have enough gold. That's right, because there is no gold. There's no way for me to get any of that. All right, well, maybe I can use like some uprooted ancients or something. Let's see if those will help me fight. So as an example of when somebody tells me it's comedy that, or it's, it's sorry, when I think it's comedy that somebody tells me War Smash is boring because it's just Warcraft Melee. Um, I look at these uprooted ancients and I think about, did you guys notice like this ancient, he has heavy armor and then if he roots, then he would have uh, fortified armor. Watch this. He like walks over here and he roots and he's in the ground and now he has fortified armor and everybody just takes that for granted, but programming that to work correctly from all the parsing and, you know, like properly reflect, like if you went in the world editor and made like some kind of custom settings for it, um, you know, that takes some thinking, you know? Like, look, now this guy, if he attacks, he's not going to throw rocks anymore. He's just going to do his melee attack. Probably. Or not, I guess. What's this deal? Hmm. I guess that's broken. 
Um, speaking of things that go wrong, maybe he's not willing to walk to his target. I mean, obviously, he wants to walk to his target, but it doesn't seem like he is. Is there any range from which he would walk to the target? No, I guess not. So that's broken. Oh, now he's moving. Really? Why is he moving now? What is what is his plan? What is he going to do? I don't understand what they're doing anymore. Can they attack each other? Now he just stands there. Well, that's bugged. Anyway, um, there's probably some work that could be done there to try to fix that. Nothing's ever perfect, you know? Maybe I'll, uh, oh, I just right-clicked that tree on accident. He auto-consumed it. It's fine. Didn't need that tree anyway. This guy looks like he just walked through a tree. That's special. I'll send this one to root over there, and then we'll see if we can, uh, aggro the enemy. Get some summons. All right. All right. Oh, this guy's dead. That one is not a summon treant, so we'll just have him flee. He's too special to die. All right, yeah, I'm going to back up to my trees, though. That sounds good. So somehow my trees are able to shoot when they're uh, when they're rooted. Oh, they have a minimum attack range. So their minimum attack range is probably applying while uprooted. That's weird. I guess you need some special code to handle it. I didn't put that in. All right, let's go beat this guy up. He's rotated the wrong way. He's clearly rotated the wrong way. So yeah, anyway, as far as interesting... See, that's the kind of interesting stuff that I see when I play War Smash, and I'm not really sure other people see it. Things like having the Corrupted Ancient Protector have a minimum attack range that gets enforced when he's uprooted so he can't fight. Like, it's just, it's a weird thing that a lot of the times I don't even really totally pick up on. Um, like, when I play Warcraft 3 and not this, um, I, I don't... I don't have that same sense where like every single piece of code is something I wrote and so I can look at it and I can figure out well why does that do that what's really going on there sometimes there's stuff in Warcraft 3 where you're just like I don't know why that's that way you know that's just crazy that's just somebody just they just did things and they just hacked it together and that's where we are now all right let's keep that one alive with heal yeah and the summons are gone. And they're attacking my hero. Alright, well, I'm going to run back to my wonderful uh, turrets over here. Give them some more force of corruption. Oh, I started casting and I interrupted. I wonder if that still wasted the mana. See, that's another thing you could look for. Like, I started casting the ability and then walked away in the, in the animation and clipped the animation. Would it still cast? You know, and that's, that's interesting. Like, we take this stuff for granted. But why take it for granted? It's not for granted when I'm rewriting everything. Because there's nothing. Everything comes from nothing. You know, I had a version of this where I, I was playing with different sizes of the grid of revealing things for line of sight when you go and explore. How, how big should the grid be? Should it be this big? Should it be bigger, smaller? What do we want? How, should, how do I want it? How, do, how should it be? You know, these are, these are interesting questions. But at least I have uh, Moonwells to heal me. That's cool. And everything is custom. You know, if you wanted to change any part of this, it's running on an open source client. So absolutely every function, every unit, every glow, every attack, every behavior, every movement, 
is all this is an open source system didn't i have a hotkey that would like turn on w for wireframe no i turned that off um so i guess i didn't have the debug mode thing he turned on right now but anyway my point is like you know you could we can just go in the code we could change stuff right now these these skills that i have right plague burst this is this is really just blizzard because i was pl programming blizzard for the archmage um, this heal thing, this corruptive heal thing, that's literally just holy light. It's just my units aren't undead, so we don't notice that it's just holy light with a different art. And uh, force of corruption is literally just summon water elemental. I just changed it so it says like summon unit instead of water elemental. Um, these are all skills that I had programmed into War Smash for a different purpose, and then I just used like map editor settings to change them. So. Um, I don't know. And so, like, you know what? On War Smash, if you summon a unit like that and then it dies, it'll probably just leave its normal decay body thing, which is contrary to, like, I'm pretty sure what it's supposed to do, maybe, would be to just disappear as, like, a special effect for summons that when they die, they're not they're not leaving anything behind because they were summoned characters. I don't have that kind of stuff yet. Um, even this Book of the Dead, which barely works by implementing that item special skill. Look at that! The Book of the Dead flashed green at the center of the map before it flashed on the units. I mean, that's jank, you know? But... Um, it works though. We get our we get our eight skeletons. I should have probably used this. Oh, I guess I didn't get it until everything else was dead. But so then, like, my heal skill probably can't be used on them because they're undead. It just won't even. I don't have the error message in yet, but it won't let you click. Um, so that's kind of fun. But when they die, I wonder. Skeletons, I guess, might be set to like not decay. But um, I mean, it wouldn't totally surprise me, you know, if they just like left little skeleton bones for like two minutes like normal units would because the summon settings are not built in like that so there you go um those are the skills somebody put in a youtube comment last week or a week before like what are the skills that i put on this hero and i thought why don't i make a video where i have some fun and run around um but yeah this is kind of my bird demoness hero i was thinking it would be kind of cool to make a, a like a cinematic -y kind of story mission for war smash maybe where like Papini, which was also the name of the mirror demon huntress that Redera fought in the Redera's Dungeon video on my YouTube channel, I thought it would be cool to try to continue that story and say that like Papini comes back as this bird demoness, where she goes from being like a demon hunter to like turning into a demon, and then maybe the demon Papini could be like, I don't know, trying to get. I don't know, that's what's Redder's head or something. I'm not sure. You know, these are just brainstorms. This is just having fun. I have no rules. Everyone else has to be like, wow, I wonder if Bob Kodak is going to take away Warcraft 3 from me or some weird thing like that. Um, we don't have that, okay? We have disks. Put the Warcraft disk in your computer. I think my skeletons are about to expire if we want to see if they leave bones. They probably won't. Honestly, skeletons probably have unit data specific to them that they don't even decay for more than a couple seconds. Um... Yeah, they just, like, does not decay, checkbox, and they disappear. All right. But anyway, that's that's using their unit editor setting. It's not because they were summoned. Um, other things. Oh, I think I fixed it. It used to be that when these were uprooted that you would still see the rally point. But now you don't anymore. That's cool. Forgot I fixed that. The rally point disappears. I think it's still true that if you tell them to move while they're uprooting, though, that they will. Um, so like he roots. If I if I start uprooting and then like set rally point while uprooting, it's like not extern no such ability, which is this like weird error, because the act of uprooting is like uprooting while also queuing commands, and then it doesn't. I, like, I'm pretty sure Warcraft 3 would probably queue a right click so that then the unit would start walking to where you right clicked, which makes more sense. I don't do that because I was queuing by ability, and so the uprooting queues that you were setting rally point. And when you finish uprooting, you don't have rally point anymore. And so he's like, oh, no such ability. What am I doing? So that's probably something that needs to get fixed. But um, I don't know. Didn't fix it yet. Didn't matter for this play session. And we just about have fog of war. I mean, that's kind of like it's it adds this environmental ambiance to have like fog of war going on. Even if my fog of war, I, you probably noticed this, the the fog of war I'm using here, 
is instant. It's not like if you played Blizzard's Warcraft three, their fog of war will like fade to to become visible, and then like fade away if you leave the area. I didn't program that in for me, so right now I just have on a timer. It's just like boop boop boop, and it just updates fog of war to a new value because. Um, frankly, it's a lot easier to program, just instant updates. Um, obviously, we could I could probably put in a fade, but I just didn't do it yet. It just seems like one of those things where then it's all like more complicated. And you kind of got to figure out, are there two layers to it? A lot of times when I put in something that would interpolate like that, um, I guess this is something interesting, that I'm told in Warcraft 3 that unit animations are always at 30 frames per second even if the game is running at 60. So right now my, I'm on a cheesier computer and so it's actually running the game at 30 frames per second anyway. But if the game was running at 60 frames per second, then I allow units to animate at 60 frames per second. I try to decouple what the units appear to be doing, the visualization of the unit from like a network layer or even in single player it's still there, but kind of the simulation layer of well, how do we think, what do we think the game data is doing? Um, so anyway, through that separation, it means that I would probably have to have two systems. Like if I was gonna have the fog of war fade visible when this guy goes over here and explores it, um, then I would wanna save its, its absolute value and then also like its fade value that it fades around. And that's kind of annoying. Like I don't know if I wanna bother to do that right now. But, but I can understand why. I can understand why you would do that. So there you go. Honestly, I feel like a really cool ability for this bird demoness would be, like, literally, it's using the wings of the harpy character from the game, right, on, like, the body of the demoness. I feel like it would be cool if she had a skill that would make her, like, fly with using, actually flap the harpy wings and, like, fly around like a flying unit. But we, we're going to have to go in the animation editor to do that, give some kind of, uh, you know, give her some, some animation settings. Um, pump in those harpy animations with the animation transfer. So she'd be waving her arms like they're flapping those wings and actually fly. But I think that would be really cool because then I could make like a story mission where you have to like fly over obstacles or something using this hero. I feel like that could be fun. And then in that story mission, it's probably would be like, you know, maybe she, uh, she figures out that if she can corrupt the entire forest and turn them purple into these corrupted night elves that are cool looking because they're purple then um maybe it turns out that by corrupting them from the, the you know like the i don't know the powers that be they end up actually freed from like bob Kodak stopping them from playing war smash or something it's like corrupting them into playing war smash and i feel like that would be a really funny continuation of the storyline where like they had like red or breaking free of red or dungeon like now it could be like this corruptor figures out she has to she has to corrupt everyone into playing War Smash. I don't know, I think that would be a really cool storyline. So I made this character that I, I had like, I think I had like a weird dream one time where I was like, that would be cool if I had a purple demon with wings like that. You know, that would be fun. So anyway, um, we need I need to make that story mission. I didn't do that yet. You know, I was kind of just playing around. I made this little map where I could just fight night elves as the corrupted night elves for fun. But yeah, I feel like that's like in the works. That would be a cool thing. You know, next couple months maybe make a cool hero mission on War Smash. Do a little adventure. It'll be fun. We'll get there. Not there yet, but we'll get there. It's interesting how the faded fog of war. Okay, so this is a bug. The faded fog of war is fading the translucency of the water. So it starts to look like shallow water. That is not what that's supposed to do. I'm, I'm gonna, now I have to look that up. What is it supposed to do? Is it even possible to fade? It should be possible, right? It should be possible to fade the color of the water without fading the translucency. But I'm fading both and it looks wrong. I didn't realize that until now, but but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to change that because that looks broken. Look out for that in the next video, see if if water that's in fog is still full alpha, it's still solid color deep water, but it's black water surface. Because that's what it should actually 
B as opposed to translucent water surface. There is a difference, as you can see. All right, so we've got work to do. We've got work to do on War Smash, and it's a weeknight, so I'm probably not going to do it because I can just be lazy, play the game and run in circles, pick up the items in my own little virtual space, and then I can just, you know, like, destroy this item, and you tell me why. Why would you destroy the Pendant of Mana? It's such a great source of mana, but, you know, I made it all up. It was all just linear algebra pixels. Like, this guy's glowing eyes, they're just pixels, you know? They're just pixels in a simulation. Have a good one, guys.